News Talk 760 WJR presents New Voices and Visions. Now, here's Jamie McCarthy. Jamie McCarthy, once again here on New Voices and Visions, here on WJR.com, in Mitch Album's studio, actually, tonight, which is always a fun one to uh, interview our musical guests, and that's why we're here. Of course, we've been doing an ongoing series. We've had uh, many artists including Patrick Davey and Matt DeMitz and uh, Carolyn Striho. And tonight we are extremely lucky to have Julianne Ankley. I got to tell you, I walked into the Fillmore. I was with uh, uh, my second cameraman, Eric Drum, Eric Anderson, who is um, sometimes my co-host and the uh, producer and working the camera tonight on this show. Couldn't be there. So Eric and I kind of did our usual uh, finagle through all of security and everything and found ourselves... Um, walking side stage right and I walked in the building and we walked directly past uh, the soundboard almost on stage and and you were playing <laughs> perfect it was a really good set I, I thought about uh, running on there and, and just joining in you should have you should have it would have been fun what a night that was um, you that know, was a blast I mean you know you've been around um, you know you were nominated uh, this year for I believe three yes three uh, Detroit years Music Awards mm -hmm. yeah and um, and I actually performed at the Detroit Music Awards this year, too, so that was a riot. It, you know, the Detroit Music Awards in general are always a riot. I, I don't always <laughs> agree with uh, the, the, the winners every year, um, but that's all right. That's part of uh, the, the political game of award shows. I guess well, just sure. to be nominated is, is, really, is really the deal. That's the standard line, right? <laughs> exactly. That, that, that's what I say anyway. But, but to walk into um, the Fillmore that night mm -hmm. to a packed crowd to see Elto Reed's uh, whole vision come true with oh, the yeah. Fillmore packed, and it was all um, for Detroit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything they did that night, they had Jeff Daniels down there, Mitch Ryder, Mark Farnar from Grand Funk Railroad, and uh, of course y yourself mm -hmm. and, and Brothers Groove and, and Cowboy Troy, and, yes. and you know I was lucky enough to get up there and, and do some stuff. Pretty cool, I think. What is that like to be included in such a, 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 a really, you know, when you talk about Mitch Ryder and Alto Reed playing in Bob Seger's band, that's yeah. got to be a pretty big deal. Um, oh, it was huge. I think it's probably one of the highlights of my career so far. I mean, to be sharing a stage with that many different legends of Detroit, it was just truly amazing. Um, and I also got to share the first set with some very good friends of mine, Jill Jack, Barbara Payton, uh, David Shelby, and um, some great musicians backing us up, too. So my band, the Rogues, were the musicians. And, uh, it sounded it was, fantastic. Oh, thank you. We, it was we, a riot. We, we walked on stage uh, briefly, so we watched, <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe two songs, and then we decided we, we, we better get upstairs and... Uh, we were there to interview Elto and yeah. tried her up in the dressing room, and uh, then we ran into Mark, uh, mm -hmm. and then Jeff Daniels, of course. But then we uh, could hear you mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of your set because you were right below us, uh -huh. and uh, fantastic set. By oh, the way. thank you. And, thank you. And uh, it, it was truly a night. You're right. It was pretty amazing. As I, as yeah. my brother called me and left me a message the next day, he knew that we were down there doing that. He said, well, there's one you can kind of drop into the bucket list of yeah, things, you, things you've done in your life. That That's, you know, I don't know how many times uh, in the rest of my life I'm going to be uh, uh, standing next to Mitch Ryder and Mark Farnar on stage uh, singing crazy. Bob Seger to me. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it cool? <laughs> yeah, even and, the end when we did Take Me to the River, and I mean, Jeff Daniels said, I don't want to sing a lead. I want to come sing with the backup singers. Wasn't and, that a blast? I was oh back there with gosh. you guys. It was, it was Joe back Jack. And and yeah. <laughs> you and I and, and Jeff Daniels kind of do. I have. There's actually a, a bit of that on YouTube. Yes. Um, and you know we're all back there doing the background. Well, he came and, up to me and he's like, "I'm I'm just going to fit in right here." And I said, "Well, you need to do this move then. If you're in the backup singer section, you need to get the timing right." <laughs> I noticed he was, very, you know, like most actors. I noticed he was very subtle. Yes. Um, <laughs> in his moves, he didn't want to like. He didn't want to overdo it. No, he didn't. It was he didn't want to overplay it. It was understated. Definitely. But definitely. Good. <laughs> you know what's amazing actually about Jeff Daniels was when he went out and he did a little blues ditty and yes. and uh, he he amazingly was a really good vocalist and yes. good and a real good guitar player. Yeah, he plays with a lot of feeling. I I really enjoyed that because uh, Jill Jack and I um, asked him if he wanted backups and he said sure. So we we did some backup harmonies for him on that as well. And um, it was it was pretty amazing to watch him, you know, command that whole stage with just he and the guitar. I mean, it was quite cool, actually. He walked on there. I was talking to him right um, before he went on, and, and you know, we were kidding around because he uses um, 
uh, what do you call those? They're metal yeah. clips on every finger. And I, I said, what, what are you, a witch? What do you need all those? I, was, <laughs> I, I knew what they were, but I was just trying to give him a hard time. Yeah. Because he's such a good guy. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. I thought he was going to do some kind of comedy thing. And he, and he goes out there and actually performs a really, really good song. Oh, yeah, that was very cool. And just really down to earth. I mean, the sound check for this whole show um, started at noon that day. And um, to watch, you know, of course, the bands are all there getting ready to do their part. And they're waiting for all of the uh, national artists to come into the room. And you're just looking around and you don't wait. Oh, there's Mitch Ryder. There's Mark Farner. Oh, look, there's that guy sitting out in the front row. Oh, that's Jeff Daniels, you know, with his feet propped up, just hanging out, waiting for the show, you know, the sound check to start. So it was really kind of magical to, to look at it from that standpoint, too. It was it, really neat. It was a, it was one of those evenings that, uh, I don't know, I, I'm sure you do as I do. It, I, I look back and I'm like, did I just really do that? Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> in, in the middle of the set, and yeah. uh, I, I looked at Mark and I said, um, I don't know the words of this song. Um, I've heard it a million times. It was yeah. good time, rock and roll, Bob Seger song. And I'm like, but, and he's like, neither do I. We'll just kind of rip it, it from here. Yeah. And then I realized he had the uh, lyrics taped to the floor. He cheated. He cheated. <laughs> he cheated. I was I was stage right, so I wasn't allowed to cheat. I had to kind of make it up, but whatever. You did great. It, you it, sounded great. It, it was a blast. It and, was. You know, um, What's interesting when I when I think about your music and uh, coming from Detroit, mm -hmm. there's sort of a Detroit sound, I think. Yes. And what's cool about what you're doing, kind of like if I were to uh, blindly put on some headphones and listen to a Julianne Ankley record, I would think, oh, this person's from Nashville. Well, thank you. That's quite a compliment. That's very cool. Um, I, it was produced right here. Um, in, who produced the record? Nolan Mendenhall produced it. Really? Yeah, and Roscoe um, White did all of the engineering, and they both, of course, played on it because they're in my band. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I think they did a great job. I'm loving it. And we're working on CD number two right now. Already? Already, yeah. That will probably be out, um, I'm hoping, by summer of 2011. So That way you'll be able to be nominated for more of uh, the Detroit <laughs> Music Awards. Uh, well, no, actually, that would be in May. So yeah, it you, might you be like... You take a year off and, like, my... per, and maybe present this year at the awards. Or <laughs> well, that like would be that. fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, now, are, the new record that was nominated, uh -huh. um, is that available on iTunes? or where, yes. where do people go to, to buy Julianne Ankley music, paraphernalia, shirts, T-shirts, all the swag that we shirts all want to coming shirts are on their way um you can get the cd at itunes you can get it at julianmusic.net which is my website and um i love to post photos and things on there so there's I've, always new photos going on i've got on it there. up right here i'm going oh, cool. to tell everybody but by the way in in your bio i noticed three or four times the word sultry I didn't is mentioned <laughs> and uh, do you have a publicist that writes that for you um three or four times i have to check that and, yeah uh, well it says with a sultry voice that that captivates from the first note and actually i totally agree with it it's well, very thank true you. you've thank got you a fantastic voice that kind of uh draws you in immediately oh thank you and uh you know in listening to it so it, it sultry is actually right on oh, cool. but I, I i had to poke a little bit of fun at you oh, at, the, sure. at the sultry uh bit um in looking at you know in listening to the music i'm like well it's true she's very sultry and then <laughs> and then to get a good look at her as i'm sure that we we are uh with our wjr.com <laughs> camera also, the look goes with the voice. Well, thank you. So thank it's you. kind of, it's, it's the full package. Well, thank you. Um, You're very kind. Well, no, I'm just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just it's just the honesty uh, from one musician to another. Well, thanks. And um, one of our things that we love to do when we bring artists on uh, this show is to have them perform at least two songs. Okay. So right away, I wanted to get into a performance before we get into some further uh, sure. questions, per, you know, like... Where were you when you wrote this song, and what were you Ooh, thinking? That's and, the fun you know. stuff. I yeah, like exactly. <laughs> the, the bathtub, the closet, the yeah. basement, all the, all those things. Um, do you have a couple of songs picked out that you uh, sure. plan on performing tonight? What's yeah. the first one we're going to hear? Well, um, I'm, I thought I would take one off of um, my, actually maybe two of them off the new CD. Um, it's going to be out, like I said, next year. One mm -hmm. of them's called Memphis. <laughs> There it is, the Nashville, uh, <laughs> yeah. going back to Nashville. The Tennessee yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, one's called Memphis, um, and another one that I'm going to do is called Let Love Take It From Here. Awesome. Yeah. Let, let's let's go to Memphis and, right. and uh, have a little uh, Memphis, and then we, we'll come back and uh, 
chat a little bit more. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks. Baby, sit down here beside me. There's a couple things I gotta say. I spent way too many lonely nights. You're out of town working away. Boss man called looking for you tonight. Said there was no Tennessee. There's no need for you to tell me. What I don't already see That that's a call coming in from Memphis From someone you know you Must know what it feels like When you decide not to show I'll bet she's sitting there waiting in the dark Keep on ringing Don't she know you're my man All those years we spent together Only meant something to me Cause I had my chance at temptation There was no choice I could see Oh, I guess there was only one of us thought that this felt right So I packed your bags for Tennessee You could still be there tonight That that's a call coming in from Memphis Someone you know Oh, who must know what it feels like You decide not to show She's sitting there waiting in the dark With a drink in her hand Let Memphis keep on ringing Don't she know you're my man Coming in from Memphis From someone you know Oh, who must know what it feels like When you decide not to show I'll bet she's sitting there waiting in the dark With a drink in her hand Let Memphis keep on ringing Don't she know you How about them apples? Pretty good. Thank you. So, who's the man that we're talking about in this, uh, <laughs> that, this song? Should I be like Taylor Swift and just say, well, I just don't talk about the names. I just write the story about them later. <laughs> I like Taylor Swift, but I got to be honest with you, you can sing far better than she can. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I noticed, um, by the way, during that song as I was watching you perform, which, by the way, is an excellent song, um, your you. necklace, which is a guitar pick. Yes. It's made out of rosewood. I got that in Cal out of California. So, really? Yeah. That's very cool. Thank you. The uh, when you are, um, you know, that song's on your upcoming record, mm -hmm. and you know, um, you've had uh, your last record. I was noticing that you released four songs yes. in total on it. Mm -hmm. well, well, I call that an EP in my yes. mind. Is that what mm -hmm. you call an EP? Yeah, it's basically an EP. Um, I was also in another band at the same time, so this was sort of a test of the waters just to see. Um, I was going with Nolan and that whole production company, um, and we really hadn't worked together yet. Um, I was referred by good friends who had used them, and I thought their records sounded wonderful, so um, we thought it would be a good idea for both of us if we started out with a four-song 
And then now this next one will have, I think it's 11 songs on it. So. Kind of test the waters before yeah, you want to commit exactly. fully. I get it. And where exactly. does the, where does the um, I, uh, you know, this is independent artist type of work. Where does mm -hmm. the uh, record industry, as far as major labels go in your future, do you, do you care? Do you want to promote it um, well, independently? Well, as far as major record labels go, um, I think the trend is, it seems to be anyway, 15 and under at the moment. So, I mean, <laughs> I I didn't start this when I was 15. I was a little bit older than that. So I I came into this business thinking that probably there would never be a record label that would choose me, you know, not, not necessarily. But it didn't stop me. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I had these songs and I knew I could sing. And um, I know that there are many, many, many artists out there that are touring nationally and they're independently successful. I don't, I don't base everything on a record label. I so. think you're. I, 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 the reason I asked the question is because I think there is the the trend. Um, I was watching an interview recently with Richard Branson, obviously a huge media mogul, who started Virgin Records, and he said if I were an upcoming artist or an, an artist of any kind wanting to put out my, uh, you know wanting the world to hear me i wouldn't bother with a major label anymore i would I've heard uh, that quite a bit get yeah. street teams and go yeah. kind of rogue and and promote it that way well i think with with the access that we all have as far as the internet and facebook and twitter and all of these social networks you basically become your own record label i mean i I really don't know how much more you can do if you if you create your own street team. That's basically what you're doing. Isn't exactly. It? Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Do you do uh, covers ever? And when you do yes. covers, what what do you like to cover? Well, um, actually, I like to cover Brandy Carlile. Um, She's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of. I do a lot of retro stuff. I do some Johnny Cash. I do some Loretta Lynn. What Johnny some, Cash tunes do you like to do? Uh, I like to do Ring of Fire. That's great. <laughs> and it's funny, on the way here, I just heard Alan Jackson released it, too. He's doing Ring of Fire now, too. So is he <laughs> copied me. It's good to go back. <laughs> What's even cooler is when an artist like Johnny Cash covers um, a Nine Inch Nails song. Oh, wasn't that amazing? Like Hurt. Oh, that was incredible. And then suddenly um, actually makes the song. The, the rule for me has always been if you're going to do a remake and actually release it, yeah. you got to do it way different than the original yes. or uh, better. Yeah. And I think Johnny Cash like nailed that to I mean you know to a gut wrenching T. He's a you know Cash always did everything his own way yeah. and that that kind of um, that kind of attitude seems to work. Yeah. You know Prince is another oh, yeah. artist that seems to do everything his way and yeah. and they kind of get away with it. To, <laughs> For to, the most part. <laughs> to to a certain degree. Madonna is another one. Oh, you know, yeah, it's like, definitely. I'm going to do it my way, and that's it. And Gaga, look at her. She's amazing, I think. Is it really, I was going to, so as a, as a female artist, uh, uh, a Lady Gaga to me, um, very talented when I yes. watch her sit down and play the, the piano and sing, and, and I'm like, do you, do you need that? You know, we talk about major labels. Do you need that uh, extra mask and all the... Uh, sensationalism that that surrounds her performances live of breaking champagne bottles one after the other and, and and to me and maybe i'm getting old but i'm like that seems a bit contrived for somebody who, who can actually play she's really well, quite good I, I guess you know isn't that the catch-22 that we all ask ourselves what do we have to do to get noticed Obviously, right. she had all of that talent long before she was putting on the lobster shoes and the meat dresses and all of those <laughs> things. But did anybody really, you know, up until maybe a few years ago, know who she was? Not like they do now. Right. So maybe now she can do whatever she wants. You know, maybe she doesn't have to do that. Who knows? Would you be willing to... Put on lobster shoes? Well, <laughs> well your own, whatever the Julianne Angley version of lobster shoes would, would be. Um, um, I, it depends. To, to do your thing. If I, if I was into what I was doing and I thought it was fun, which she obviously seems... It looks to me like she's having a riot. Yeah. I don't know. I would hope so anyway, because... I mean, if I was into what the suggestions were, probably, maybe, who knows, you know? I mean, I guess we'd know when we cross that bridge, so. Yeah, and <laughs> you, when, when you take your musical journey back in time, um, how long, first of all, how long have you been doing it? Not as long as you think. Only about, I think, seven years, so. That's and pretty amazing, and, and already on uh, album number two. Yeah, actually, um, I recorded five different recordings with the band before this too so this is actually my seventh recording what was the name of that band that was bread hill 
Okay. I actually won a Detroit Music Award. <laughs> for you, yeah. You got one. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Ladies and oh, gentlemen, I'd nominated. I'd like to I'd like to go on record for saying <laughs> someone I know that's been nominated uh, several times as you have yeah. also has one. Yeah. Where, where do you keep that? It's on my television, uh, my entertainment center. There you go, because it's a big deal for us. Um, it is. I, well, I want to explain to the WJR.com audience, New Voices and Visions, that uh, you know we bring a lot of musicians on the show. And uh, if you're from Detroit, the Detroit Music Awards is really kind of our Grammys. And it so is. it's a big deal, and everybody deal. shows up. And uh, you know you get nominated uh, if you're lucky. And uh, you know in, anybody that tells you, uh, well, I'm just happy to be nominated, um, is lying. <laughs> they, they really want to win. And uh, it is nice to be nominated and recognized. It is. Um, but truly, you know, it's a uh, it's nice to actually bring home some of hardware, course. right? Yeah, it it really is. How do you feel about videos? I love them. I've um, I would love to do a lot more of them. I shot my first video a year ago, September. Stephen Clark from WXYZ directed it. Um, I saw that on your website when yeah, I was looking at yeah. that. What, what made you decide to go with Stephen Clark and uh, have it's, him do that? It's really funny because um, when I decided to break free and do this whole solo thing, um, I kind of went into overdrive and I wasn't sleeping and I was staying up all night and thinking about things all day and just coffee, coffee, coffee. How many things can I do as fast as I can? I always feel like time is running out. And Did I you try think. Adderall in the mix in there too with <laughs> no, the coffee? No, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> See me after the show. Okay. Um, so I was just um, in the middle of recording the EP, EP and thinking about what I wanted to do. Um, there's a song on there called No Place for a Lullaby, which has a huge story behind it, why I wrote it and what's going on with it. Um, but I just happened to be on Facebook, and I saw a video that Stephen had done for his daughter, and it was pretty decent. It's pretty cool. So, and we've been songwriting buddies for quite a while through the NSAI. And um, I started asking him, hey, how much to do this? What, what's going on? And, uh, you know, he said, well, uh, let's talk. So we started talking and um, we decided to shoot the video up in my hometown, which is Port Huron, Michigan. And we set up a whole um, site. You know, we had the whole backstage thing going on and a dressing room trailer and catering and everything. And it was all my family. <laughs> was, you, know you know what? Those, those are the best kind of shoots. Oh, it was great. It was it was a lot of fun. And we shot the whole video in one day. We had a plan. It was go, 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 go. And um, I'm really actually quite proud of it. That's great. It was nominated for a Detroit Music Award. Um, and it's now being used by Homemade of America nationally for their campaign to build temporary housing for the homeless. You see, you're doing something great with your music. Yeah, you made a great video. That that's that's really when it works out the best, when you can actually, uh, you know, your efforts go into something uh, for your own artistic, you know, reasons, and then you're able to do something with it like that and, and give to yeah. charity. That's kind of... You know, that was something that I'm really very, very proud of because... Um, I've been a single mom also for seven years. That's so weird how there's a coincidence there. There's a but, big coincidence there. <laughs> there's a parallel. There but, is. Um, you know, at times it gets very difficult to raise kids on a single income. Sure. And it was about two years ago, uh, it'll be two years ago this February, that I sat down one night after paying the bills going, I don't know how I'm going to do this anymore. I, You know, how am I going to keep this all going? And the economy was going nose diving and I think unemployment was at a 27 percent rate in Port Huron at the time it was the highest in Michigan yeah um, hence all, hence the the, uh, the the show that Alto put on to kind of raise yeah. the, the, the Detroit bar a little bit and absolutely. bring things back absolutely so you know 1030 at night I got on my guitar and I started writing about you know what would it feel like if you lost everything how would you be how would you maintain what you do and keep your children and still be a mother that had any goodness to what's going and how would you do that and I just started writing down the lyrics and it, it was actually pretty sad um, and I just put them away um, and about two weeks later I actually ran into two mothers who were living in their cars with their children Wow! and um, I ended up talking to the little girl first and found that's how I found out she just children when they're three or four years old just talk 
and um that's where you get the real truth uh, yeah. But, yeah well it broke my heart because she had already adjusted she was already dancing and going along and talking and adjusting to her life living in the car like it was normal and uh that really kind of freaked me out and I yeah thought, okay, i would God, say there's there's, um, there's 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 a uh, pretty good inspiration right yeah, there so is I that where the, uh, you got the inspiration for t tell me a little bit about the story for no place for a lullaby because yeah, that they're, I mean, they're, that's how the song is is it's from a woman's standpoint of living in her car i didn't plan on getting here you know i think i think before this big economy crash happened in a lot of people's minds um, someone that was living in their car did something to deserve it, like they were some sort of a slob or a drug addict or something to that point. And the the fastest growing number of homeless people in America are mothers and children. And it's just really sad because even families with double incomes are having a hard time making it right now. And um, that's why I wrote this, you know, this song. That's why I finished it. It came from my own pain and my own worries. And I thought, no, I can I can put this to good use and and help other people with this. What's uh, what's the next song called? This is actually going to also be on the... Here we go with the capo, ladies and gentlemen. This is called the capo that, that Julianne's putting on. And it's, I have uh, a pink sparkly one. This one's going to be in G if I have my... Uh, B flat. Well, oh, G. B flat, yeah. There you go. Or G. Yeah, this one's called... Uh, this, is, this is a pretty traditional country song. It's called Let Love Take It From Here. It's Julianne Ankley on New Voices and Visions here on WJR.com. Let love take it here. Take it away.
Thank you. Well, that's going to wrap up another great show of New Voices and Visions, only here on WJR.com. Tonight we were very graced to have the presence of Julianne Ankley, one of Detroit's best. This one's called It Ain't Over, and she's already working on another one for 2011 release. She's been nominated three times. She's got another Detroit Music Award, so look for Julianne Ankley and huge things to come. Until next time, it's Jamie McCarthy here on WJR.com. This has been New Voices and Visions. For more podcasts, visit WJR.com.